Hello, I'm Christine. Episode eight and nine of Shadow Hunter season two have premiered. Shadow Hunter, Shadow Hunter, Shadow Hunter, Hunt, 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 Hunt. Okay, so I missed a week. Well, I missed my first week ever of reviewing the Shadow Hunter show because I was going to NerdCon and I didn't have time. And I am sorry. Episode eight was the party at Magnus's for Max for receiving his first marks. Basically, the summation of that episode was Lyman happened. Everyone was magicked and drugged at the party, and things went cray cray. It was just like a hodgepodge of chaos, and we got to see Magnus be like incredibly powerful and bad. Badass. And that personally was my favorite part of the episode. Seeing him whip shit around when Alec threw himself off the banister when Magnus just like sucked him back and he put up the wall and they found that warlock lady that was bad. He was just like, shoo, 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 shoo. And I was like, shit, that was hot. That was awesome. That was Magnus. I love the way the Malik relationship is progressing. When Mars attacked Jace, I was just like, what the actual f is going on here. Even when Simon kissed Maya, all this wasn't real, you know, it was just like these hallucinations from the spell. But like when it happened, I was just like, I can't, I, I can't. Simon would never, ever, 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 ever do that to Clary. Like never, ever, 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 ever. This is Clary. It was a crazy episode. It didn't really like sit in my mind as something that I think I'll remember for a while. It was fun to watch in the moment. It was nice to see Max again, but I think we're just seeing Max so that Max can die. Oh, and we had the start of this Izzy Raphael relationship. Okay, I'm just gonna talk about this in terms of episodes eight and nine. I understand like Raph is now addicted to her blood and she's addicted to his venom. I just was so frustrated with Raphael. He was so strong about you need to wean yourself off this shit. You are strong, blah, 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 blah. And his resolve just crumbles away like a second after he tastes her blood because he's addicted. And I'm just like, <sighs> It's just so devastating to watch Izzy go down this road. Like, Alec found out and took her out of the drug pen. When I say drug pen, I mean Raphael's place, wherever. Izzy's, like, so far gone that she's lost the resolve to free herself of the addiction, which is just scary. I don't like, I don't like how we've minimalized the effects of Yin Fen. I mean, it's just frustrating when we see Aldertree. Wow, you're looking well. It usually takes people weeks to wean themselves off of Yin Fen, and I'm like, usually? Weeks? Why couldn't you just call something else? Yin Vamp. Vamp V Fen. You just give it a different name. How creepy was that scene with Elder Tree too? He makes a pass at Izzy. He wants to take her to dinner and she's like, are you? asking me out. He's like, I insist. I want to take you to dinner. And she's like, yeah, no thanks. To which I was very happy. But then we just see her with Raphael and I'm just like, this is weird. What happened to Raphael being responsible? It's upsetting that this has created a little bit of a rift between Alec and Magnus, but I'm sure they'll get past it. When Magnus is talking to Raphael, Raphael is like, I thought you of all people would understand. Her and me is just like you and Alec. And I was just like, <laughs> No. Before I completely move on to episode nine, let me give episode eight, I would give that a B. I mean, it wasn't a bad episode. It just didn't like stand out to me as amazing or anything. Episode nine, I think I'd give a B plus. Again, I think it was a good episode. I just wasn't like thrilled by it. I haven't been like, wow, these past few episodes. I'm just like, yeah, that was good. It flowed, it worked as an episode. It just it wasn't <laughs> show stopping, show, show stopping. There haven't been as many bookish moments. And those are the moments that really pull emotion out of me. You start episode nine, Clary and Simon are making out in the canoe and Clary's like, this is so weird. And he's like, wait, what's weird? What's weird? Poor Simon. And Clary's like, oh, nothing. And they just make out some more. But I feel like, you know, that's foreshadowing the whole, they're not really meant to be a couple thing. As like Clary's taking off Simon's shirt and throwing it off the canoe, Jace walks in and I'm just like, oh my, what is happening? What's going on right now? And he just like blows this whole Horn. <laughs> it was very funny. Jace kind of makes fun of Simon's ability to protect Clary. I can protect her. I got moves. What moves? You want to show me those moves? Want to practice those moves outside? Yeah, let's take this outside. As soon as the sun goes down, let's take this outside. I'm loving the back and forth between these two that they're putting in the show now. So the overarching drive for this episode is Clary's hand going totally book six Dumbledore. All of a sudden it's like she slipped on the ring of Slytherin. Her whole hand's like decomposing. It's disgusting. The blood oath that she promised to the warlock lady is coming into effect. The warlock lady wants her to go save her daughter and Clary hasn't gone to do that yet. And so 
the curse is coming. And she's going to die if she doesn't go and find Madison. I think, personally, that this curse is kind of counterproductive. If you want her to go find your daughter, how is she supposed to do it if the blood oath is killing her? It's too late for her to fulfill this. You should have warned her. Told her it was going to happen, so then she'd have the incentive and be able to fulfill the task. Whatever. I love the scene where Jason and Claire just break into Magnus's apartment, and Magnus is in there with Alex, and he's like, Don't you people have phones? That felt very Magnus. Books. Magnus is finally seeping through, and I love it. So Clary insists on bringing Simon on this mission, and Jace is like, why do we need him? He has skills that we can use, Jace. What skills? I, I don't know. Night vision? And Jace actually says the words, there's a room for that. <laughs> Then we have this scene where Maya attacks Clary and tries to kill her. This is the scene that felt the most out of place for me in this episode. The Maya that I know, and even the Maya that I feel like they planted in the show, would never do that without discussing it. Like, she would never just go and try to kill Clary. That's very rash. She looks at Luke as a father, and she knows that Luke looks at Clary like a daughter. So how could she possibly do that if she had a heart, knowing that someone she cares about cares about this person to just go kill her? Also, she cares about Simon. Simon! is in love with Claire. Like, there's too many connections to justify this rash of a decision by somebody that we're supposed to care about. I could see her being upset and telling everyone and maybe getting other downworlders to attack her. But her herself going to do it, just, I... I couldn't, I just, I couldn't accept that in the moment. Then we had this whole thing where Maya was locked in a closet by Luke because they couldn't trust her anymore and she was claustrophobic and she like destroyed, I don't know exactly what happened there. Like she escaped because she turned into a wolf. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if we're like working into turning Maya into like a villainous character. Is she going to be turned against everyone now? We see Valentine a lot in this episode. Every time we flash him, he's in this like creepy circus warehouse. I don't know why we're there. I don't know why we moved everything to a creepy circus warehouse. House. I can only assume it's to impress Maddie. It just felt like they wanted the scene to be creepy so bad. They were just like, you know what would make it creepy? Like a rundown carnival thing. Let's just drop the cages in here and uh, say it's because of Maddie. <laughs> then we've got that sexy cooking lesson with Raph and Izzy. It feels like Raph is always putting on this sexy voice. Does it not? Especially in the cooking scene. Yes. Take the butter and smooth it in the tortilla. And deem the border. I'm just, can you just speak? You already got her, okay? She's addicted to your venom. You don't need the smooth voice. Izzy has like her angelic ruin. It's usually right here. In this episode, I don't know if I just didn't notice like in other episodes it was like this. The angelic ruin was like in her boobs. And I I just couldn't help thinking like, how did she get it there? Did she write it on herself? And if she did, was she like pulling her boobs apart so that she could write it on straight? Hair and makeup, was she just like standing there with her boobs pulled apart so that they could properly draw it? Even pulling apart one boob and drawing with the other, I imagine it's hard to get that perfectly even. Like she'd have to have someone else draw it. And who is she gonna have draw it? Did Raphael draw that on print? And then the episode ends. Jace finds Maddie brings her to Clary, she heals Clary, and then she portals with Clary. Clary was just so prone to being randomly portaled to other places so easily. Like this child pulled her into a portal. We had this scene earlier on where Dot was just like, Clary, come with me. Just took her hand and was like, la dee portal to Valentine. You would think Clary would have learned something. So Clary's portal to Valentine. Simon and Jace manage to find the warehouse. Jace finds Clary, he releases her, but then Valentine is there. We've got this standoff, and all of a sudden, Simon, attacks Valentine and oh it was just so cringe because Simon goes Clary run he's sacrificing his eyes risking his life Clary stands there and watches if you're not gonna run go attack Valentine don't just stand there and watch Simon fumble around trying to fight Valentine and it takes Valentine like one second to get Simon in a headlock. And then they pour a hole away. I just, that scene was just like mind boggling. They didn't try to help. They just stood there. They didn't run. They just stood there. Guys. Guys. We'll see what happens. I'd love to know how you're feeling and how you felt about these episodes. Please share your thoughts. I'm Christine. I'm at Xtime on Twitter and Instagram. I make videos every Tuesday. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.